Namaste, friends. Uh, not Wolfgore here anymore, or even Eric Bonet, which is strange. Uh, technically, right now, and this may not be the case if you're watching this video in the future, but technically at the moment, the name on the channel right now is Hope, first name Hope, middle name RR, R period, R period, Torture. And I wanted to talk about that because this is something that I'm pretty excited about. Um, and just kind of give you an update on where we're at in writing with the book and books in general. Uh, things are moving along abreast and from, from your side they might feel quite slow and in reality things are moving kind of slow but they're also moving fast in a way because time is just kind of weird like that. So where are we actually with the book? Well we are at about 75% on draft three which is sort of the final draft ish, kind of, I, I hope. That's the one that I feel confident enough to start really sending out to people. And I imagine that, assuming I sell this book at some point, it will look quite a lot like draft three in its current state. Uh, I'm sure there will be some changes to come, but I can't imagine it requires any more major revisions. So the book is getting pretty darn close. And as I talked about in my previous vlog, uh, part nine, I am considering, or I was considering at the time splitting up book one into three different books because it was super long and I felt like I kept having to rush scenes that I didn't want to rush and trying to go to a publisher with, you know, a, what would probably have been a 250,000 word novel, which is very long if you don't have a frame of reference. It's not unheard of, but it's definitely probably not the type of thing that publishers are like, yay, you know, like they, they want smaller, smaller sells better and I'm making assumptions. I don't know that I don't work in the industry, but it, it seems like a pretty rational assumption to me. Um, so I have gone ahead with that idea and I've been very pleased with the results. I really like this shorter format. It's, it's easier to work with. It's easier, easier to think about it in three smaller sections. And I think it's just going to be a better place for me to start a better, just kind of across the board. It just seems kind of better to work with smaller sections so long as you can still get it right. You can still get those narrative arcs right and you're not compromising the integrity of the story or the characters or any of that by, um, by changing the format. But actually, I feel like the format has actually been enhanced. I've been able to add more. I've been able to think about it with more clarity and I've just felt really inspired by this new format to push forward with this idea. So what that means is that we're actually coming up to the finish line on book one. And so I am thinking about pen names because, you know, this entire time for the past two years, I've been thinking about, well, how am I going to publish? Am I going to publish as Eric Bonet? Am I going to publish as Wolf Gore? <laughs> am I going to publish as something else? So I've been giving that a lot of thought. And as we get closer, I'm wanting to try on the fit of some of my pen name ideas. Currently, my favorite, it's a little out there, um, and as you already know, it's Hope RR Torture. I've had this other idea floating around for a while when it comes to pen names. Um, both J.R.R. Tolkien and George R.R. Martin obviously both have R's and R's uh, in wedged in their name, and I probably should have looked up what those actually are. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if these guys changed their names or anything at any point, but they're both definitely inspirational authors for me. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien obviously is like the father of modern fantasy. Everybody that writes these days within the fantasy genre is building upon the work of uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Obviously, he wrote The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, etc., and The Silmarillion. And Martin, uh, I actually just finished up his work, and I quite enjoyed the Game of Thrones series. It's it's very dark. Um, it's, it's very hope tortury um, and was feeling quite inspired by him. Uh, don't love everything about his writing style, but at the same time, like, I was compelled. I went all the way from, you know, book one all the way through uh, A Dance of Dragons, you know, five really big books um, back to back nonstop. And, it, you know, it was really, really good. So the RR, you know, I'm, I'm definitely drawing some inspiration from Martin. You know, um, and, and you can even see that in the prologue a little bit, I think, with, you know, having these sort of heavy hitters conversations. You know, I, I, I like this idea of uh, like the small council in Game of Thrones. Those are some of my favorite scenes in the early books is when the small council are meeting and you've got like Lord Varys and Peter Baelish and, and Cersei and Tyrion and whoever the hand of the king is at the time. There's like 30 of them. Um, and, you know, all these like heavy hitters within the 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 
top end of the realm and they're just like making these massive decisions and stuff through, you know, sort of casual, callous conversation. And like, there, there's a lot of courtesy there, you know, but still, you know, if you've read it, I think you probably know the scenes that I'm talking about and they left an impression on you. You know, I wanted to include some of that, uh, some of that vibe in the books. And I think you can see that in the prologue when you, when we have that scene of like the man thing talking with King Anatar and stuff. So the point being, uh, two authors that I'm very inspired by, both have middle names, R period, R period. And then the two original authors that really inspired me to start doing this and really inspired my particular style was J.K. Rowling and Patrick Rothfuss. So the RR would theoretically stand for Rowling, Rothfuss, and then Hope Torture is just sort of an on-brand, I don't know, to, to describe what it means, it's like, I, I guess you have to think about, I'm going to bring up some words here, but I want to preface it by saying, take out the sexual connotation, right? And, and think of what's left without the sexual connotation. So we've all heard of s &M, you know, sadism and masochism, right? So it's like within the, the concept of hope torture, and I'm getting kind of out in the weeds here, I know, but the author, me, would be sort of the sadist and the audience would be sort of the masochist. Again, minus the sexual connotations, but in terms of giving and receiving the story. And I don't know, just the way Martin, again, for example, writes, he, he's, he's very mean to his audience, you know? Um, I believe he was asked in an interview, um, and I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but it was something like, hey, do you enjoy the taste of your fans' tears? And he's like, hmm, I also enjoy the taste of wine. And that really stuck with me, and I was like, I get that. I want to hurt my fans, you know? Um, I want to insult them. Uh, as Tome does in the meta Tome scenes, the narrator, he'll just come out of left field and just be like, you're an idiot, you know? Like, I, I love doing that stuff. I don't know why. I, I don't get it. Maybe it's just some sort of repressed part of me that's coming out in, you know, this 2023 environment where I'm just like, I just want to call people idiots. So I'm going to have my narrator do it for me. Um, so there's that. And then, you know, it, definitely inspired by like Suzanne Collins. I remember when I was rereading Hunger Games, this was probably a year and a half ago now, uh, just, just how impactful emotionally she was to my feels just within the first, you know, half dozen chapters of the Hunger Games. And I was just like, wow, Suzanne, like, you want to hurt me. You want to make me upset. And, you know, when you look up her author photos, I'll probably put one on screen right here. And she's got this smirk on her face, just like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, I get it. You know, I think that there's something within a lot of authors that is a little bit sadistic, but again, minus the sexual connotations. It's not a sexual thing. It's just, you, you want to make your audience feel something. And that thing is often like pain, you know? So hope are our torture. I don't know if that described it well at all. It, it's still a concept that I'm wrestling with and trying to figure out. Um, but I do, I like the name. I think it has a certain ring to it. The only major problem that I have with Hope R.R. Torture is that the William Witchbane series is kind of being written for a, you know, it's, it's definitely a young adult book, you know, little emphasis on the adult, you know, it definitely has adult themes, but like, I'm hoping to be able to market it to like people as young as 13, you know, I, I'm, I'm shooting for a PG-13 vibe, um, and I'm just, I just have like this image in my head of like, the calling book one, you know, sitting on the shelf at like the local target and some young teenager, you know, let's say this teenage boy is like 13 and he's like, Oh mom, I heard about this at school. Can I have this? And she's like, huh? Well, it looks interesting. Hope are our torture. No, put that back. And it's like, as far as like branding and marketing goes, which is something that I'm trying to be considerate of, I don't think it's perfect. In that sense, you can see where I'm coming from. It's I, I don't think it's perfect, but it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. I don't know if there is a perfect pen name out there. And the possibility still exists that I'm not even going to use a pen name. Um, <laughs> I had another one, and it was so dumb. Um, I talked about it in a previous vlog, but I ended up pulling that vlog because I didn't like the vibe. Um, but just to bring it up again, because it was, it was really dumb. It was Cornelius Thuggish Gangsterton. Um, and that one just made me chuckle. I was thinking about it as I was running down the road, uh, 
and it was a super hot day and I was just miserable, um, super, super, super overheated. And that one just came to me and I was like, that one would be goofy. You know, I want something that catches the eye. Then again, the cover can probably do that. But still, it's like if you're going to have one of the main things, you know, on the title, it's like, what do you have? You have like the title image, you have the name of the book, and then usually you have like who wrote it. So it's like you don't really have that many different elements on the title to work with. And I'm fine with it being just my name. I'm perfectly proud to be Eric Bonet, author. You know, that's that's really cool. Um, and, and I'm honored to have my name on the cover of my book. I think that's awesome. But at the same time, if I can do something else that has, you know, a deeper artistic meaning that helps capture the eye, raise questions in people's mind, which I do think like hope are our torture, you know, that kind of evokes a certain degree of question in people's mind. Like, what the hell does that mean? You know, like that's a big part of my writing style is trying to evoke that exact feeling, which is what the hell does that mean? <laughs> you know, I want to make people curious and I want to make them want more. Again, hope torture. You want hope, you know, but maybe you're not getting the answers that you want. So I don't know. It's hard to explain directly because it's all a, a bit abstract, but I think you're you're getting the picture that I'm painting. Uh, if you have any ideas for me for pen names, please leave them in the comment comments below. Or, you know, if they're your own idea for a pen name, I promise I won't steal it. That's totally fine. I would just love to have this conversation because I'm thinking about it a lot. And, uh... I'm happy to be trying on this pen name for right now. I don't know if it's going to stick, but I do think it's kind of cute and cheeky and intriguing. So uh, let me know if you guys like it and look forward to book one, which will be coming out soon. And I guess all my plan right now, because it's it should be ready to go by the end of the year. Um, I've got, I think, three chapters I need to write from scratch and maybe, and then those will need to be edited with Jason, and then probably three more chapters that just straight need to be updated and edited, so we're pretty close. It's not that much work left. Um, the prologue definitely has some, a, a, a good handful of revisions that need to be done because it's just been so long since I worked on the prologue, and I've done a ton of world building since the last time I went through and did a full pass of the prologue, so definitely need to do some updates there, but overall, it's really quite close, and I'm thinking... Once it's done, I don't think I'm going to be ready to try and send copy, you know, queries out to agents or um, editors just yet. Like, the, even if the book is ready, which is, you know, still certainly uh, a variable there, I'm not sure if I'm ready yet as an author. It's like I've only been doing this two years, and there's definitely, like, a meta thing that I've heard where it's like you should, you know, it, it, it's probably going to take a you about 10 years to get published traditionally if you're consistent with your writing and you're writing like one to two hours every day. And I'm like, oh, I've only been doing this for two years. Like I'm still quite green. Um, I'm pretty new and I would love to spend some more time working on the world building just to make sure that all my little ducks in a row are in a row because I've got a lot of ducks. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I've got, I think about 200 pages of, you know, backstory and lore and all sorts of goodies and stuff. And I, you know, I really want to make sure that stuff is all in line before I publish. And I just don't feel any huge rush to get it done immediately. I also want to finish the map. Um, convenient that I have this right here. This is sort of a hand-drawn with Sharpie basic idea of the map. Obviously, the main problem with Sharpie is that I have no way of erasing and improving lines and adding things and stuff. So I kind of hit a, a standstill with the map there. Um, but I was able to purchase a drawing pad and uh, my family chipped in for my last birthday. So I have a drawing pad. I've got Krita, the drawing program, so I can start to work and build a map. But I also want to flush out as much of the landscape, the civilizations as possible so that I can, you know, not be adding stuff in future books. The point is, the, the map is... It doesn't seem like it would necessarily be that big of a challenge, but there's actually a lot that goes into preemptively doing a map for your first fantasy book because it's like you need to have it all kind of done before book one comes out, and yet you're going to be world building the entire time. So it's just it's a little counterintuitive in that way. All of this is to say I don't think I'm going to try and publish right away. I think I'm going to at least kick the can down the road for about six months, start to work on book two, do some world building and try and get this map done so that when I send out my query letters, I can have the map ready to go. 
Um, and if I can't do a good version of it myself, I will uh, at least have a lot of reference points that I can send to a professional artist that has experience making maps and be like, hey, can you like turn this into something good <laughs> that you would actually see on the inside cover of a book? Um, so still lots of stuff to do, but when book three is done, I think I am going to do sort of just hand printed out copies. Obviously it's not going to be like a book book that is actually bound by a book bindery, uh, but they may just be like printed out on regular stock paper and, you know, all, I don't zip time together or something. I don't know. Um, but I'll probably try and sell those early copies, um, once they release and I'll get some sort of PayPal system set up because those aren't going to be free for me to make. You know, there's going to be the cost of paper, the time of actually making them and figuring it out and getting all of these pages printed out. You know, ink cartridges aren't free either. Uh, so I'm thinking probably just like a flat 20 bucks. Um, and I will, you know, for anybody who wants that early access, they want to see that. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking a flat 20 bucks. Don't take that price to the bank just yet. Um, but I'll get something official worked out. But I do really want to create something that I can actually send out to you guys. And I'm sorry that they're not free. I, w I wish I could do them free, but it's like I put so much time and effort into this. You know, 20 bucks. It's And uh, they will be signed and numbered. So if you do get one of those early access drafts, uh, you know, in, in future years, this series may really turn into something and you may have a cool oddity right there. So, you know, it's a little bit of an investment, kind of like buying an NFT. It might turn into something cool and go up in value over time. Um, in fact, I think that's very plausible. Uh, so we'll talk about that more as we get closer, but I've been recording for 20 minutes already. Again, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I love your faces. Beardheart, let me know what you think of my silly pen names and anything else we talked about in this video below. Bye, guys.